I had a peaceful breakup with the princess of the Beijing elite circle, Amelia. She reunited with her long-lost first love. As her stand-in, I tearfully accepted a 40 million yuan breakup fee and quietly stepped aside. Very dignified. Right. Then why? Shortly after our breakup, did she suddenly chase me down, threatening to kill me? I swear, I didn't do anything. All I did was go on a blind date and find a new partner. Was that really such a big deal? Chapter 1. Wait, Vincente. You. Going on a blind date. In a high-end western restaurant, my date hadn't arrived yet. Sitting across from me was the restaurant owner and my good friend, Justin. He looked at me in surprise. Who are you meeting? The granddaughter of my grandfather's old friend. I shrugged, swirling the ice in my whiskey glass, speaking casually. The old man specifically asked me to meet her before he passed, just to see if we're compatible. Justin nodded, hesitated for a few seconds, and couldn't resist lowering his voice to ask, What about Amelia? You liked her so much. Four years of relationship, and you're really okay with ending it so lightly. Lightly. A good word, but not quite accurate. I took a sip of my drink and smiled faintly. The breakup fee was 40 million yuan. Not exactly light. That's the only bit of decency she had left. Justin shook his head, letting out an indignant huff, but then he seemed to remember something. His expression turning awkward as he rubbed his nose. Vincente. Sorry, I didn't get your belongings back from Amelia's place. I paused. Confused. What do you mean? Didn't get them back. After the breakup, I immediately went back to the countryside to handle my grandfather's funeral. I just returned to a city yesterday. I had to rely on Justin to help with packing my things. After all, I took the breakup fee. It was only polite to clear out and give her space. Justin rubbed his forehead, a big guy looking genuinely spooked. It was terrifying. When I went to pack your things yesterday, Amelia wasn't at the office. She was at home. She was just sitting on the sofa, staring at me without saying a word. It freaked me out. When I finally finished packing and was about to leave with the suitcase, she suddenly said, Justin, you have nice hands, how about I chop them off? Damn, I almost pissed myself. That definitely sounded like something Amelia would say. The Lu family has absolute power in Beijing, and if the Lu princess wanted to chop off someone's hands, it would be done in no time. But this didn't seem like something she would actually do. We had such a pleasant and dignified breakup. Everything was settled clearly. Why would she mess with my belongings for no reason? Chapter 2. Justin looked at me and whispered. I don't think she actually wants to break up with you. I shook my head. That's impossible. Everyone in our circle knows about me and Amelia. Years ago, Amelia's first love, Peter, left her to chase his dreams. Not only did he reject her advances, but he also left the country without saying goodbye. Amelia was devastated for a long time. There wasn't much I could do except stay by her side, silently supporting her. Honestly, I never expected anything in return, but then... On Christmas morning four years ago, when I handed Amelia a cup of honey water to help her with her hangover as usual, she suddenly looked at me and said, Vincente, do you like me? I blushed on the spot, shaking my head as I stammered, I, yes, but don't worry, I don't expect, let's be together. Four words, four years, I replaced Peter, wholeheartedly caring for Amelia for four years. Although she remained cold towards me, she publicly acknowledged that I was her boyfriend. Everyone in the circle said I was the most successful stand-in ever. I thought so too, believing we would spend our lives together. But then, on the day of our four-year anniversary, Peter came back, with just one sentence. Amelia, I miss you. He took Amelia straight to the airport, and that day, I was at home, decorating with balloons. Amelia. But in the end, I didn't get to see her. All I received was a 40 million yuan breakup compensation. Her first love came back, and she couldn't wait to get rid of me. How could she not want to break up? I shrugged, pretending to be relaxed. All I hope now is that in this big city of A, I never run into those two again in my life. Justin nodded in agreement. Yeah, everyone in the circle knows about your relationship. Running into them again would be way too awkward. My eyes narrowed. My gaze passed over Justin's shoulder, looking at Amelia, who was walking through the restaurant door, watching her pause briefly before heading towards me. I couldn't help but sigh. Justin, your mouth really does have a way of making things happen. Chapter 3 I chose to have my blind date at Justin's restaurant for three main reasons. First, it's close to the main branch of my hotpot restaurant. Second, it's near where the lady I'm meeting lives. Third, Justin and his wife started from scratch and don't belong to Amelia's circle. So, I figured the chances of running into someone we know here would be slim. Ah, who could have predicted this? Justin gave an awkward smile, his voice lacking confidence. As we spoke, Amelia had already reached the table. She didn't say a word. Just raised an eyebrow at Justin, and he quickly abandoned me like a chicken with its neck pinched. TSK, this big guy, 
Scared like that, is Amelia really that intimidating? I raised an eyebrow, poured a glass of whiskey, and gave a calm smile to Amelia, who sat across from me. Miss Lou, care to join me? It had been more than ten days since we broke up. Seeing her again, I was surprisingly calm. Amelia didn't move, her delicate, bright eyes fixed on me, with such an outstandingly beautiful face. The pressure she exuded was overwhelming even when she wasn't speaking. This might be what they call the aura of someone in power. I tightened my grip on the glass, but my smile remained unchanged. After half a minute of silence, Amelia finally smiled, raised an eyebrow, and picked up the glass of whiskey. She held it but didn't drink, her gaze probing. When did you return? Yesterday, I replied with a smile. After all, I have a business to run. Unlike the great Miss Lou, I can't afford to waste time. Amelia nodded, her expression relaxing slightly. Here to see Justin. I paused, about to respond when a stunningly beautiful woman with a cold and elegant demeanor, dressed in a white chiffon blouse and a black pencil skirt, stood in front of the table. She glanced at me and Amelia, a flash of hesitation in her bright eyes, her voice gentle as water. Vincente. I answered. It's me. Are you Angelica? Angelica nodded, then looked at Amelia. Did I come early, or did you arrange another blind date? As soon as she asked, Amelia's face immediately darkened. You're here for a blind date. Chapter 4. Yes, I'm here for a blind date. I smiled slightly. So, shall I not see you off, Miss Lou? Amelia glanced at me, her brow furrowing even more, but she didn't get up. Instead, her gaze shifted to Angelica, her eyes darkening. Miss Lou, I lowered my tone, issuing a second polite invitation for her to leave. The way she was scrutinizing my guest was quite rude. Why the rush? Amelia raised an eyebrow, staring at me with a dark look in her eyes that I couldn't quite decipher. Suddenly, she smirked and let out a light scoff. After all, we've shared a bed for four years. How about I check out your new partner for you? Chapter 5 I couldn't help but clench my fists. Amelia, how much more do you intend to hurt me? No need to trouble yourself. Miss Lou, I smiled, lifting my head to look at Amelia, though my heart felt cold. My grandfather picked this person for me. His judgment won't be wrong. Amelia's eyes narrowed slightly, fixing me with a probing gaze, but she said nothing. The sudden ring of a phone broke the tension. Amelia frowned, took out her phone, and her expression immediately softened. Amelia, aren't you here yet? The deep, magnetic voice was clear enough for even me to hear. Peter, Amelia's gaze swept across my face, her eyes darkening. I'm here downstairs. Yes, I ran into a friend, exchanged a few words, and now I'm coming up. A friend, just exchanging a few words. I smiled, my fists clenched so tightly that my nails dug into my palms, the pain shooting straight to my heart. Amelia hung up the phone, stood up calmly, and smoothed her dress. Please continue, I won't disturb you. I watched her as she walked upstairs, a dull ache in my chest. Angelica, however, sat down across from me with a serene expression her delicate features softening into a smile. So, Mr. Sue, is it my turn now? Chapter 6 My emotions were instantly pulled back as I looked at Angelica, somewhat surprised. Miss Jiang, you still want to continue? Angelica slightly curled her red lips, her expression extremely natural. Why wouldn't I want to continue? First of all, I have judgment, and I can see what's going on here. I don't think Mr. Sue did anything wrong. Secondly, I have a normal perspective on life so I don't care if a man has had other women before. Lastly, aside from the blind date, I have another matter I need you to take responsibility for. Mr. Sue, for a moment, I didn't quite register what I had just heard. I looked at her in shock. Re-responsibility. A wealthy young lady, asking me to take responsibility. For what? I swear, I don't even know her. Angelica's lips pressed together, and she suddenly said, I have a dog that eats skewers. My brain felt like it was about to short-circuit. Wah what? Angelica took out her phone and placed it in front of me. I looked down in confusion, and with just one glance, I was dumbfounded. It was surveillance footage from a streetlight's perspective. The timestamp was from the night Amelia and I broke up. The 40 million yuan check was lying on the ground. I was clutching a bottle of wine, sitting on the curb outside my hot pot restaurant, crying like a dog. Next to me was an actual dog, sneaking bites of the skewers I had packed from the restaurant. Little dog, why are you wandering around when you have a tag? Were you abandoned too? Damn it. So was I. These skewers are cold. Don't eat them. See that restaurant? I own it. Come here tomorrow at the same time. Okay. We'll be brothers in misery. And I'll treat you to good food every day. In the video. The drunken me was holding the dog's left ear. Rambling on and on. Outside the video. I was so embarrassed I wanted to dig a hole and bury myself in it. The surveillance is clear. And my Max really came back the next night. He waited outside the hot pot restaurant all night. 
But Mr. Su, you didn't show up. After hearing Angelica's words, my expression froze, because the next day, I received a call about my grandfather's critical condition and went back to the countryside. Angelica locked the phone screen, looked up at me with a faint gaze, thought for a moment, and added, since that night, my Max has truly understood the cruelty of the human heart, and he's been depressed at home ever since. Chapter 7. I tricked a dog into becoming reclusive. This, this guilt is too heavy to bear. I'll treat him. I'll treat him. I must treat him. Let's go buy skewers now, and get the best dog food. I'll go apologize to Max. Angelica slightly pursed her lips, then pulled up her WeChat QR code and placed it in front of me. Clearly, my trustworthiness in her eyes wasn't very high. I quickly took out my phone and scanned her contact information. Seeing the cute golden retriever in her profile picture, I covered my face. Miss Jiang, don't worry, I'll take responsibility. Angelica pursed her lips again, not saying anything one way or the other, let's go. I quickly got up to follow her, but just as I took a step, I heard the sound of high heels clicking from upstairs. Almost instinctively, I looked up at the second floor staircase. Amelia was standing there, her gaze deep as she looked at me. Behind her stood a few young ladies who always looked down on me. During my four years with Amelia, these women never thought much of me. I was about to leave when a man in a custom-tailored black suit, with an elegant demeanor, walked down from upstairs. I frowned and looked at Justin, who was standing at the bar, frozen like a statue. Why is Peter here too? Seeing Peter, Justin's face changed, and he quickly shook his head at me, mouthing exaggeratedly, I didn't know. Peter, upon seeing me, perked up, as if completely unaware that Amelia and I had been together for four years. He greeted me with great enthusiasm. Vincente, you're here too, long time no see. I forced a smile and nodded. Hope you've been well. Peter pointed at the group behind him, looking helpless. I just returned to the country and Amelia and her friends insisted on throwing me a welcome party here. I didn't really want to come. But then, Amelia insisted on opening a hot pot restaurant on this street for me, so I came to check out the new location. After saying that, Peter turned around and intimately wrapped his arm around Amelia's waist. Then he looked at me. I remember you're in the hot pot business too, right? So now we'll be in the same industry. Why don't you come help me check out the place? He's getting into the hot pot business too. I quickly raised my eyebrows and looked at Amelia. Chapter 8. Actually, competition within the same industry is quite normal. If it were someone else, I wouldn't feel any particular way about it. But Peter's family owns a massive empire worth billions. So why on earth would they need to open a hot pot restaurant? My family used to be one of the top families in Beijing's elite circle. But my parents passed away early and unexpectedly. Back then, I was just a clueless kid. And all the family assets were divided among the shareholders and uncles. All that was left for me was a nearly bankrupt hot pot chain. Amelia witnessed firsthand how I gritted my teeth and endured countless hardships to finally support this business. I refuse to believe she doesn't understand what kind of impact Peter opening a hot pot restaurant on this street would have on me. As Amelia's gaze swept over me and Angelica, she remained silent for a few seconds before saying blandly, Don't be petty. Helping Peter won't do you any harm. Heh. Sure. No harm, indeed. Peter discards a woman, then says he wants her back, and I'm supposed to hand her over. Now he wants to encroach on my market share, and I'm supposed to smile and help him. Where does he get the nerve? Vincente, why don't you come along? Peter asked sincerely, inviting me once again. I turn my head, sneering, just about to respond. He's busy, not available. Angelica, who had been quietly standing by, suddenly spoke up, surprising everyone. All eyes turned to her in astonishment, but her expression remained unchanged. Her delicate brows arched slightly as she smiled at Amelia. He's coming to my place. Then she tilted her head playfully, sticking out her tongue at me. Didn't you say you'd take responsibility for me? Let's go, shall we? Chapter 9. Taking responsibility, the way she phrased it was quite subtle. I cast a grateful glance at Angelica and smiled. Let's go, going home with someone you just met. Vincente, do you have no shame? Amelia's words came almost immediately. Everyone present was taken aback by her remark. I frowned, feeling a surge of anger. And you? Holding on to your current boyfriend while managing your ex, do you have any shame? Shouldn't she be focused on helping Peter with his hot pot business? Why does she care where I go? To clarify, Miss Lou, unexpectedly, Angelica, who had already reached the door, turned back and smiled at Amelia, her eyebrows slightly raised. Vincente and I didn't just meet, we have quite a history together. Hearing this, Amelia's expression suddenly froze, but Angelica turned around, wrapped her arm around mine, and started walking toward the door. The close contact made the fragrance on her body linger near my nose. Half of my body felt numb from her touch. My mind was buzzing. Her words were odd, but honestly, 
she wasn't wrong. Chapter 10. Max was indeed deeply hurt by me, a young dog, lying on the balcony, somehow managed to look as if he had aged prematurely. Max, Max, I was wrong. I was really wrong. I bought luxury dog food. Please have a bite. I knelt on one knee on the floor, holding a bowl of dog food, sincerely apologizing to Max. Angelica sat quietly on the sofa, watching. I felt like she was laughing at me, but when I looked over at her, she wasn't smiling. It wasn't until Max finally allowed me to hold him and play with him that the sky outside had already turned dark. I'm hungry. Can you cook? Angelica suddenly asked. I was taken aback, then nodded. Yes, Amelia had a picky palate, and there were many things she couldn't eat. After we got together, I was the one who did most of the cooking. After four years, my culinary skills were quite refined. Cook me a meal. Angelica walked over, knelt on the carpet, and started playing with Max. She didn't even give me a chance to refuse. Since she didn't mind, there was no reason for me, a grown man, to be shy about it. I rolled up my sleeves and headed to the kitchen, preparing two dishes. Just as I was about to serve the dishes on the table, my phone suddenly rang loudly in my pocket. Startled, I almost dropped the plate. I quickly set down the dish and answered the call without checking the caller ID. Hello. Your belongings are still at my place. Come get them now. I paused, even looking at the phone screen to confirm. Amelia. She's asking me to pick up my stuff at this time of night. It's too late. I'll send someone to get them tomorrow. The other end of the line went silent. I could hear some faint, suppressed breaths, and then Amelia's cold voice. It has to be now. Chapter 11. I was completely baffled and took a deep breath. Then just throw them away. Miss Lou. The reason I was so intent on retrieving my belongings was that many of the items were gifts from my grandfather. But if retrieving them meant having any more entanglements with Amelia, I'd rather just let them go. When someone dies, everything becomes meaningless. While my grandfather was alive, I fulfilled my duties as a grandson and have no regrets. These keepsakes, if I can keep them, great. If not, then so be it. I sighed, ready to hang up the phone when Angelica, who had just stood up from the carpet, suddenly let out a soft moan. Ow. That hurts. I quickly moved to support her arm. Have you been kneeling too long? Look, your knees are all red. Angelica, clearly annoyed, replied. How was I supposed to know you'd take this long? Bang. Simultaneously, a loud banging sound came from both the phone and the door outside. In shock and confusion, I heard Amelia's cold, teeth-clenched voice. Vincente, are you coming out on your own, or should I break down the door and drag you out? I stared in stunned disbelief. Amelia is actually outside the door. On the phone, Amelia's voice remained icy. Three, two, I clenched my fist, took a deep breath, and suppressed the anger rising in my chest. I'll come out. Amelia, with her spoiled princess syndrome, would absolutely do something as drastic as breaking down the door. Chapter 12. But it wasn't me who opened the door, it was Angelica. She stood in front of me, her expression defiant as she stared down Amelia outside the door. Does Miss Lou need something? Amelia's expression was dark, her delicate fists clenched tightly but she didn't acknowledge Angelica. Instead, her angry eyes focused on me. You have time to spend five hours at her place, but no time to pick up your own things. I was at a loss for words, is there no tomorrow for you? Miss Lou, is one night really that critical? Peter's staying at my place tonight, Amelia replied. Her gaze fixed on me as she spoke calmly. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable seeing your things. Also, I don't want you to accuse me of holding onto your belongings later, making a mess of things. It's best if you take them yourself. Once and for all, the wound in my heart was silently torn open, bleeding profusely, unconsciously, I tightened my grip on the door handle and gave a cold, bitter smile, fine, I'll go get them now. Chapter 13. This was the first time I sat in Amelia's car without wanting to say a single word to her, resting my head against the seat, I closed my eyes to relax, do you like her? Surprisingly, Amelia was the one to break the silence, I frowned and opened my eyes, meeting her watery gaze in the rearview mirror. After a three-second pause, I nodded. Yes, she's pretty good. Hey, pretty good. It seems like you've been doing quite well these past few days. I thought maybe you would. I raised an eyebrow. Would what? Nothing. Amelia smiled, turned her gaze back to the road, and said nothing more. Chapter 14. Justin had packed all my belongings. Two large suitcases were sitting next to the dining table in the living room. Amelia sat at the table, calmly sipping water as she watched me, saying nothing. I had no intention of staying any longer in this familiar yet strange place, it was too painful. I grabbed the suitcase handles and turned to leave, but suddenly, my wrist was grabbed tightly. Vincente, weren't you madly in love with me before? Amelia looked up, staring into my eyes with her usual superiority, and now, after just a few days, you've moved on. 
You can just be so calm and collected, being with another woman. Do you even believe that yourself? Chapter 15. In an instant, anger flared up inside me. Amelia's mocking way of talking about how I couldn't let go of her was far more humiliating than when she gave me the breakup fee. Does she have no idea how I treated her these past four years? Just because I loved her, does that mean I deserve this kind of humiliation? I forcefully pulled my hand away, my gaze icy, does it matter if I've moved on? What matters is that I've been a proper ex and haven't bothered you, but Miss Lou, what's your deal today? First time I've heard that Miss Lou keeps her lovers on retainer and provides after-sales service, could it be that now it's almost over? You suddenly realized you can't bear to let me go. Amelia continued to stare at me, a strange emotion flickering in her eyes. After three seconds of silence, she suddenly spoke. What if I say yes? My spine stiffened, and for a moment, I doubted whether I had heard her correctly. Did Amelia really just say that? What did she say? Amelia stood up from her chair and suddenly wrapped her arms around my waist, resting her cheek against my chest. She sighed. Vincente, if this is some kind of tactic of yours, then congratulations. You've won. Come back to me. Let's continue together. She finished her words and stood on her tiptoes, gently kissing my lips. These days, haven't you missed me? I've been missing you a bit. Chapter 16. Amelia's body was soft, and she looked at me with sultry eyes. The atmosphere was highly suggestive, but I couldn't care less about that right now. All I wanted to know was whether Peter, who was a living person, was still standing there while Amelia said those words. W. Wait. What about Peter? Amelia narrowed her eyes and spoke with certainty. I'll find a place for you. He'll never know. I want both of you. A string in my mind snapped abruptly. I forcefully pushed Amelia away, barely stopping myself from hitting her. Where do you get the audacity to think I'd be willing to be your side guy? Does Amelia even see me as a person? How deeply must I have loved her for her to have such confidence? Vincente. Amelia didn't move, staring at me with a cold smile in her voice. There's a limit to how much you can play hard to get. This is your one chance. If you walk out that door today, don't think about coming back. I turned back to glare at Amelia's darkened face, sneering coldly. Hold on tight to your Peter and move on. If we meet again in this lifetime, it'll only be at the crematorium. Chapter 17. After that day, I never saw Amelia again. After all, she's a high and mighty lady. Rejecting her so harshly, it's a wonder she didn't come after me for payback. But how could she possibly come looking for me again? Although Amelia didn't show up, Peter's Hot Pot restaurant did have a grand opening. The location was chosen rather strategically, just one street away from mine. To celebrate the opening, they offered a 70% discount for an entire month, burning money to attract customers. All the hot pot restaurants on the street were struggling to survive. I managed to hang in there since I still had the 40 million yuan to back me up, so the losses weren't too bad. But even so, Peter's restaurant still stole 30% of my customers. Ah, what can you do? When you're up against a big player with deep pockets who burns money for fun, what can you do? I don't even know how long my savings will last. Squatting on the curb outside my restaurant, I stroked Max's head, looking into his big, round eyes. I clicked my tongue, gently tugging on his ear. I pointed to the financial report in my hand. Come on, Max, give me some analysis. What else can we do to make money besides price and flavor? Woof. Max suddenly perked up, barking twice toward the end of the street. I looked up in confusion, only to see Angelica walking towards me in a beige dress and high heels. Her tall figure paired with her stunning looks made her a walking masterpiece. Doctor, you're off early today. I greeted her naturally. Since the blind date, Angelica and I had grown quite close, mainly because of Max. Her work as a doctor was unpredictable, so she left Max in my care most of the time. Pets aren't allowed inside the hot pot restaurant, so I set up a little umbrella outside for Max to stay under, guarding the entrance. Not many surgeries today, Angelica smiled, pulling a lollipop from her pocket and offering it to me. Something sweet to lift your spirits. I shook my head. No thanks. I'm not much of a candy guy. Angelica raised an eyebrow slightly, unwrapped the lollipop, and held it up to my mouth. When I say eat, you eat. Open up. I froze for a moment, feeling oddly flustered. Just as I was about to reach out and take it myself, the leash in my hand was yanked suddenly, caught off guard. I stumbled forward. Thankfully, Angelica reacted quickly, squatting down to catch me, preventing me from face planting. But, I ended up holding her in my arms. Chapter 18. Thump, thump. Angelica's soft body leaned into mine. My heart rate skyrocketed. My face flushed. I quickly let go and stood up, flashing her an embarrassed smile. Wow. Thanks for saving me. Otherwise, my handsome face would have been done for. Angelica stood up with me, but her expression was peculiar. She leaned in close to my ear and whispered, Mr. Sue, your heart was racing just now. Were you falling for me? 
Since I saved you, shouldn't you repay me with your affection? Angelica's breath was warm against my ear, and her fragrance made my thoughts a bit chaotic. My eyes widened slightly. W wait. Is she implying what I think she's implying? Is Angelica interested in me? This is bold, she's making the first move. Chapter 19. Woof, woof, woof. Max's barking came just in time to save me. I glanced over and saw him baring his teeth at a customer who had just left my restaurant, blocking their path. Oh no. I quickly ran over and grabbed his leash. Max, Max, they paid. They paid already. They can go. Don't block the way. Max growled softly in his throat, but after a few seconds, he finally stepped aside. I hurriedly apologized to the customer and made sure they left without any more trouble. As I looked up, I caught sight of Peter walking across the street from my restaurant. His expression was grim, as if he had just had an argument with someone. How strange. He's supposed to be the big winner in life, with both love and career going well, yet he looks so down. Well, it's none of my business. I crouched down and hugged Max's head, letting out a sigh of relief. Thanks for saving me, Max. Otherwise, I really wouldn't have known how to respond to Angelica. Chapter 20. What I didn't expect was this. That same evening, Angelica, Max, and I ended up trending on social media. Earlier in the day, a popular vlogger with millions of followers happened to be live streaming at my restaurant. They found it amusing when they saw me sitting on the curb, asking Max to help me with the financial report, and they aimed the camera at us. Then, they caught the entire interaction between Angelica and me along with Max's antics, live on stream, hashtag watchdog hashtag, hashtag dog boss analyzes financials hashtag, hashtag beautiful coupleship hashtag, hashtag pure love drama hashtag, hashtag brave beautiful doctor and handsome innocent restaurateur, totally shippable hashtag. Several hashtags quickly climbed the trending list, the phone rang around 2 a.m., I was deep asleep, head buried under the covers, and groggily answered, who's this? There was silence on the other end. I waited a few seconds, frowning, my voice growing more annoyed. Hello, speak up. Who is this? If you don't say anything, I'm hanging up. Vincente, who gave you the nerve to actually be with her? Do you want to die? Amelia's voice came through the receiver. The next second, I hung up the phone, rolled over, and went back to sleep. Just before drifting off, I muttered, which in my dreams, how scary. Chapter 21. The viral explosion of that video was beyond anything I could have imagined. People started flocking to my hot pot restaurant, and it quickly became a trendy spot. Every day, there was a long line stretching out the door. In just a few days, the 30% of customers that Peter had stolen from me came back tenfold, thanks to Angelica and Max. So, as I was closing the restaurant one evening, Peter showed up, smiling as he congratulated me. Congratulations, Vincente. Your restaurant is really popular. I looked up and smiled but didn't respond. Cutting straight to the point, what do you want? It was closing time and I wanted him to leave, not sit around. The smile on Peter's face faded, no longer pretending to be friendly. He looked at me with arrogance and coldness. Vincente, name your price. I was taken aback. You want to buy my restaurant? Not just that. Peter's gaze was heavy as he looked at me. I want you to disappear from a city completely. I gestured to the waitress cleaning up nearby, signaling that she could go home. Then I looked back at Peter, my tone dripping with disdain. What kind of nonsense is this? Beijing is a big city. As long as you two stay away from me, I think we can avoid each other for the rest of our lives. Peter let out a cold laugh, his eyes full of arrogance and contempt. Vincente, don't think that just because you're cozying up to Angelica, you and your shabby restaurant can break into the upper class circle. Do you even know her background? Even if you wanted to marry into her family, they would never accept someone from a small time hot pot business like yours. So, here's some advice don't be ungrateful. While your restaurant still has some value, and before I decide to completely ruin you, take the money and get lost. As harsh as his words were, I had to admit, Peter's thinking was pretty clear, unexpectedly so. Honestly, my hot pot restaurant is quite profitable, and I'm not short on money, but in Beijing's elite circles, it's nothing impressive. In terms of matching up to Angelica, I really don't. But what I don't understand is this, Peter, I just don't get it. When I was with Amelia, you two weren't even together. You chose to leave her. When you came back, I walked away without a word. I didn't fight, didn't cause any trouble, didn't offend you. So why are you so determined to target me? Chapter 22. After I asked my question, a flicker of anger flashed across Peter's face. He then let out a cold snort. Amelia may be blinded, but I'm not. It's obvious she still has feelings for you. If I don't act now, am I supposed to wait for you to come back and replace me? Peter spoke angrily, still maintaining his arrogant demeanor, but I could tell that he wasn't doing too well. Since I came back, 
She hasn't let me touch her, and she keeps staring at her phone, lost in thought. A few days ago, I tried to kiss her, and she instinctively said, Vincente, stop fooling around. What kind of person do you think you are? Do you think you're worthy of competing with me? Even if I said I didn't want her, what makes you think you could pick her up? And I don't know what's wrong with Angelica's eyes to be dumb enough to fall for dirty like you. Not as dirty as your mouth. Angelica's voice came from the doorway. Both Peter and I were stunned. Watching her as she walked over and stood in front of me. Shielding me. At least Vincente lives with integrity. Loving and hating with all his heart. Unlike some people. Who have skin as thick as a city wall. You gave her up. And now you shamelessly come crawling back. You said you went abroad to chase your dreams. But in reality. You failed and got sent back. Didn't you? From my angle. I couldn't see Angelica's expression, but I could clearly see that Peter's face had gone pale. Just as I was marveling at the power of her words, Angelica suddenly turned to me, a mischievous smile on her face. Don't worry, my family doesn't have mouths as filthy as his. When we choose a son-in-law, we look at character and how we feel about the person. She paused and nodded towards Max at the door. Our dog does too. Me. That kind of sounded like an insult. Chapter 23. By the time I closed the shop, it was already late at night. The neighborhood was quiet, with fallen leaves rustling silently underfoot. Angelica and I walked side by side, taking Max for a walk as we headed home. Sorry, Miss Jiang, I keep bothering you by borrowing Max. It's nothing, Angelica replied, smiling as she looked at Max. He's grown up now, it's time for him to work and support the family. I chuckled along, hesitating for a few seconds before speaking up, and about the online rumors about us. I'm sorry. For a young woman like her to be the subject of gossip like this must be damaging to her reputation. Angelica stopped in her tracks. Under the streetlight, her eyes sparkled as she stepped closer, hooking her arm around my neck. Her red lips were inches from my face, her big eyes blinking playfully. Is that an apology? I thought it would be a reply. Mr. Vincente, I'm so beautiful. Don't you find me attractive? Chapter 24. Here we go again. Even though I knew I wasn't in love with Angelica yet, this woman, handpicked by my grandfather was incredibly alluring. Who could resist a stunning beauty like her when she's being so forward? I instantly tensed up, my toes curling in my shoes. I quickly disentangled myself and pointed to the entrance of my building behind me. I, I am home. Good night. With that, I turned and dashed into the building, practically fleeing. Angelica's laughter echoed behind me. Vincente, you're too adorable. Even as I exited the elevator, my face was still flushed. I took a deep breath, silently scolding myself. Vincente, how old are you? Haven't you seen a beautiful woman or been in love before? It's just a woman confessing to you. Why are you getting so nervous? I slapped my cheeks lightly, trying to regain composure. But as I looked up and took a step forward, I nearly jumped out of my skin at the sight of someone standing at my door. It was Amelia, whom I hadn't seen in over a month. Looks like you've been having a good time these days. Amelia's face was cold as she stepped toward me. The sound of her high heels clicking on the floor echoed loudly in the quiet night. Instinctively, I took a step back. I couldn't help it, this version of Amelia was a bit intimidating. But as soon as I stepped back, it was as if I had provoked her. She suddenly took a big stride forward and threw herself into my arms. Vincente, hold me, kiss me. I really missed you. Before I could even react, she pressed her red lips against mine. Chapter 25. Our lips collided, tangled together with the taste of alcohol. My heart sank, and I quickly pushed her away. Amelia, what are you doing? Amelia staggered back a few steps leaning against the wall, drunkenly staring at me. Her eyes were full of hurt. Are you really with her? I frowned and opened my mouth to speak, but before I could, Amelia continued forcefully. Break up with her. Come back to me. Let's start over. Then, as if something inside her broke, her shoulders slumped, and her voice softened. Vincente, you've really won. You've completely won. I really can't stand seeing you with someone else. The day you took your things, I really thought I wouldn't care if you left, but for over a month now, all I can think about is you. Nothing feels right without you. The thought of you being with Angelica makes me want to drag you back right now. Chapter 26. If she had said these words at any point during the past four years, I would have been moved to tears and completely devoted to her. If Amelia had shown this kind of sincere remorse just a month earlier, she wouldn't have needed to ask, I would have offered her my heart. But it's too late. Far too late. I shook my head gently, taking the opportunity to push her away and turn toward my apartment. Sorry but what does this have to do with me? Go back to Peter and focus on your life together. Stop dwelling on things that don't matter. I unlocked the door with my fingerprint, and the lock beeped as it opened. As I gently pulled the door open, a desperate voice called out from behind me. I broke up with him. Is that good enough? My eyes widened, and for a moment, I couldn't believe what I had just heard. What do you mean? 
Is that good enough? As if I had been forcing her into anything, if I had the power to make her do something, would I have been humiliated like that before? Amelia took a few steps toward me but ultimately stopped short. Maybe it was the alcohol, but her voice was unusually filled with confusion and surrender. I've spent this time trying to convince myself that I've always loved Peter. I thought I was supposed to love him, but something's not right, nothing feels right. I can't even stand him touching me. I stepped inside, my emotions surprisingly calm. Amelia, it doesn't matter anymore. Who you love has nothing to do with me. I really don't care. As long as you don't love me, that's all that matters. Then tell me. Amelia's voice grew frantic, like a child denied a treat. What do I have to do to get you back? I tightened my grip on the door handle, not turning around. You might want to call the police. Chapter 27. I didn't expect it, but Amelia didn't call the police. I did, because something happened at my restaurant. Over a dozen customers fell ill with food poisoning after eating at my hot pot restaurant and were hospitalized. Someone anonymously reported that there were serious food safety issues at my restaurant. At the same time, the story of how I replaced Peter and simped for Amelia was twisted and dug up online. The post was long and filled with accusations against me. It claimed that I shamelessly took advantage of Peter's time abroad to steal Amelia from him. Suddenly, all the people who had been fans of me and Angelica as a couple were furious and disillusioned. The online hate against me was relentless, but in the midst of all this bad news, there was actually a silver lining, and that was, I also got food poisoning. Since I had no place to call home, I'd been eating all my meals with the ingredients from my hot pot restaurant. The netizens who had been ready to condemn me were suddenly confused. Okay, now I believe the food poisoning was an accident. Alright, I'll reluctantly believe in your hot pot restaurant, but I still doubt your character. Wait a minute, fans who refuse to give up on the ship are screaming. If Vincente got food poisoning, did he go to Angelica's hospital? Yes, and as it happens, Angelica was the one treating me. Angelica stood beside my hospital bed in her white coat, adjusting the flow of my fore with a serious expression. She was usually so warm and gentle that her stern demeanor now caught me off guard. I mumbled from under the covers. Is it serious? It's not serious, Angelica replied calmly. Just rest for a few days, then why do you look so stern? Because this is a serious matter. Angelica finished recording my information and turned to leave, casually adding, no sugar for you in the next couple of days. Ah, the sudden change in topic left me confused, and I nodded dumbly. Okay, TSK TSK, looks like someone's in trouble if Angelica is mad. The handsome police officer sitting by my bed, taking my statement, suddenly shook his head with a knowing look. His familiar tone made me blink in surprise, why do you say that? The officer smirked, because whoever did this to you, even if they turned into ashes, Angelica would dig them up to question them. How foolish can someone be to mess with Angelica? Just because she doesn't have to take over the family business doesn't mean she isn't well-educated. Her family, even the dogs are practically geniuses. Do you think they're good people? Suddenly, the medicine being pumped into my body felt a little too cold. No way, right? Angelica, who's always so gentle and kind, could she really be that terrifying? Chapter 28. As it turns out, she really could. Even though someone had already confessed to the incident at my hot pot restaurant, the police were relentless and dug deeper until they eventually dragged Peter into it. It turns out that on the night Amelia came to me drunk, asking to get back together and was rejected. She went home and kept saying my name, wanting me back and telling Peter she wanted to break up with him. Peter, humiliated and enraged, came up with the scheme to get rid of me once and for all. But now, with the police's public announcement, Peter's reputation in the industry is thoroughly ruined. At the same time, the entire story of my relationship with Amelia was uncovered by netizens. Wait, so Peter never even accepted Amelia's confession? How is that, getting someone stolen? He didn't want her. She was cherished by someone else for four years. And then he had the audacity to come back and try to claim her. My god. Vincente really got the short end of the stick. After all that effort to win his girlfriend, she gets snatched away just like that. This is infuriating. Is Amelia blind? Oh my god. I work at a wedding planning company. And I can confirm that the day Peter returned, Vincente had decorated the villa to propose to Amelia. As soon as that comment appeared, it caused a huge uproar. People began tagging Amelia, sarcastically reminding her, you missed out on such a heartfelt proposal. You missed out on someone who loved you so much. So, Amelia, do you regret it now? And the most shocking thing was that Amelia actually replied, yes, I deeply regret it. Dot. I'm trying to make amends and win him back. When Angelica saw that comment, I was sitting in my hospital bed eating an apple, she suddenly turned her head to look at me, which caught me off guard, what, what is it, am I not allowed to eat apples, Angelica shook her head, but her expression remained somber, and her voice was quiet, you can eat it, oh, I nodded skeptically, 
taking a small bite. If, Angelica suddenly spoke again, making me pause mid-bite, cough. I cleared my throat, thoroughly confused, if what? Nothing. Angelica shook her head again. I was just thinking that if you really are stupid enough to go back to her, I'll set my dog on you, me. Chapter 29. I eventually figured out what Angelica meant, because that very night, Amelia showed up in my hospital room. She was dressed beautifully, her eyes shining. Vincente, I know everything now. I was completely stunned. What? What do you know? Before I could react further, Amelia reached into her pocket and pulled out a red velvet box. Don't open it. I blurted out instinctively. Amelia's delicate fingers froze, and she looked up at me, tears welling in her eyes. Why? I already know that you were planning to propose to me that day. Vincente, we were supposed to get married. I'm ready to marry you now. You loved me so much before. You were so good to me. You haven't really given up on me, have you? As she spoke, her eyes filled with hope. Vincente, I regret breaking up with you. I was wrong. I've broken up with Peter. I won't waver again. Come back to me. Let's start over. Okay. Chapter 30. No. I shook my head and quietly took the ring box from her hand. I held it in my hand, turning it over like a walnut. Yes, it's true. I was planning to propose to you that day. But Amelia, you missed your chance. Amelia's eyes darkened. She shook her head, her tone stubborn. No, you love me. Vincente, you've loved me for so many years. How could you give up on me so easily? We haven't missed our chance. If you come back, we can start over, can't we? Our eyes locked, and the stubbornness and deep affection in Amelia's gaze were so clear. For a moment, I felt a strange certainty, as if there was no mistake. This time, she truly wouldn't give up on me, and there was also a sense that if I refused her, she wouldn't stop until one of us was broken. I pressed my lips together, unsure of what to say, just as I was about to speak. I caught a glimpse of a shadow outside the door, a person and a dog passing by. All right, I'll give you a chance. I smiled and nodded. Then, under Amelia's hopeful gaze, I casually tossed the ring box out the window. If you find that ring, I'll start over with you. Amelia's eyes trembled as she stared at me. Then she nodded solemnly. All right. Chapter 31. On the day I was discharged, Angelica came with Max. I was standing by the window in my hospital room, quietly watching Amelia searching in the garden below. After several days of searching, she found the ring box, but the ring inside was still missing. Who knows if it was lost or picked up by someone. If she finds it, are you really going to get back together with her? Angelica appeared beside me, her expression dark and her tone sour. Max stood proudly by her left leg, looking as if he was ready to attack if I dared to say yes. I couldn't help but laugh, of course. Angelica's face turned black instantly. I grinned mischievously at her and pulled a man's ring from my pocket. But that's only if she actually finds it. Since Amelia wasn't willing to give up, I had to solve the problem in my own way. She needed to experience the feeling of working so hard, almost reaching the light, only to be plunged into deep despair. I had once handed her my heart. She caught it but didn't cherish it. Instead, she casually tossed it aside and even stomped on it. So why should I forgive her just because she realized she was wrong? Tisk. Angelica clicked her tongue and shook her head, but the smile on her lips was impossible to hide. Mr. Sue, you're quite ruthless. So bad, but I like it. By the way, Mr. Sue, can I get an answer now? About our blind date, do you want to take it further? I raised an eyebrow and tilted my head, not answering immediately. Instead, I crouched down to pat Max's head, laughing. Max, what do you think? Woof, 